Cogging torque ripple minimization via position-based characterization, or what we call anti-cogging. Lots of robots require high torque, direct drive or low gear ratio actuators, such as human safe back drivable robotic arms, haptic devices, and high fidelity position control. But the motors in these robots tend to be expensive. Why use motors like this when there are motors that are rated to the same torque, half the weight, and one third the cost? This motor should run smoothly, but it doesn't because of torque ripple. Across a wide range of motors, torque ripple and cost are inversely related. Here, on the x-axis, we have cost. On the y-axis is the torque ripple ratio, which is a measure of torque ripple. And you can see cheaper motors have more torque ripple. In these applications, computation and electronics often hold a large portion of the cost. But with Moore's Law and consumer electronics continuously driving down prices, actuators become the dominant cost, relatively speaking. Let's look at the three main sources of torque ripple to see if we can help this problem. Mutual and reluctance torque are when current flows through the coils, causing a magnetic field that reacts with the magnetic fields in the rotor. Ideally, the shape of these currents with respect to motor position should be sinusoidal or trapezoidal to make the motor spin, but in reality they aren't, and this shape discrepancy causes a torque ripple. Voltage and current sensors can measure this discrepancy. Cogging torque, also called detent torque, is when the permanent magnets attract the motor's core. Unlike mutual and reluctance torques, cogging torque cannot make the motor spin continuously, only contributes to torque ripple, is always present, and is only detectable by mechanical sensors. Torque ripple has been heavily studied in the last 25 years, and most of the research falls under two categories. Software methods for mutual and reluctance torque ripple minimization, and hardware redesign solutions for cogging torque ripple minimization. But can we combine the two philosophies to minimize cogging torque ripple with software? Holtz and Springob laid down the foundation for cog mapping by iteratively monitoring current, while a speed loop tried to hold speed constant. We extend this to two methods without requiring a speed controller, current sensor, or iteration. The first method is to use position control at all positions and map the applied voltage or current when the motor is stopped. We can also compensate for static friction or stiction and transistor dead time with this method. The second method is to spin open loop as slowly as possible and map the accelerations. You can see these two maps agree nicely with each other, but to double check, we used a force torque sensor during testing to validate the two methods. Now, we can invert the cog map and feed forward these torques, currents, or voltages. We tested both methods on 11 motors. This is the same graph as before with the price versus torque ripple ratio, but now with the anti-cog motors. You can see what was once an inverse relationship is now roughly constant with an average of 69% reduction. We think PWM resolution is the cause of this constant. You can see peak-to-peak -peak torque ripple is on the same order of magnitude as the PWM resolution, between 1 and 5.5 and counts. So we doubled the resolution. A motor that had 69% reduction went to 82% reduction simply by doubling the resolution. To verify that anti-cogging works in robotic applications, we made a robotic arm modeled after a Phantom Omni. We looked at the motors with a torque rating within a factor of two of the Phantom Omni's continuous torque, then ranked them by performance and economic value, which we defined as the inverse of peak-to-peak -peak torque ripple times cost. The naturally smooth E-Flight Park 400 has the best value, but after anti-cogging, the naturally rough Exceed RC Rocket 400 has about the same peak-to-peak -peak torque, but only one-third the cost, and was the cheapest tested motor. We used an updated motor driver with an even higher voltage resolution, as well as wireless communication so that no wires cause friction by crossing over joints. We ran the arm along various trajectories, including a 36-line segment, 2-meter trajectory where the arm had a root mean squared error of 7.4 millimeters without compensation, while with compensation the error was 3.5 millimeters, a 52% reduction. You can see the nominal motors get caught on cogs, particularly in the top right of the M and at the bottom of the O, while the anti-cog motors traverse these regions smoothly. We have also applied anti-cogging to permanent magnet and hybrid type stepper motors with no changes to the algorithm. So here's the anti-cogging turned off, and here's anti-cogging turned on. And here's the desired trajectory along with the same two paths but gathered from encoder values. As you can see, you can now get good performance from cheap motors. Thanks to you, our funding sources, and everyone that worked on this project.